Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the day watching this video. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I am Minister Ryan Rutley, and here, as in the stead of our fine pastor, Dr. James Mormon from Christian Tabernacle Church and his lovely wife, we just send you greetings in the name of Jesus. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us to be to the praise of your glory. Thank you for life, health, and strength, food, clothing, and shelter. We just want to magnify you, God, for being so good. Even though we're good at being human, you're better at being God. I'm asking today that you will forgive us for all of our sins, iniquities, our shortcomings, procrastinations. Father God, any mismanagements, I'm asking that you would forgive us if we've offended any brothers or sisters, Lord, and you. I'm asking that you would help us and mature us and build our most holy faith, Father. Today, I'm asking that you would allow the words to jump off the pages into our hearts, that it will bring light and bring life. We'll be careful to praise you and to glorify you. Now, we yield to your authority. We say yes to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, with that being said, you guys, I'm so excited to share again with you the word of God as we are talking today from the subject, faith is evidence. Again, faith is evidence. If you can, just in the comments section, you guys just type that in, say amen, say what's up, let us know where you're chiming in from so that we know that the word of God is making the effect that we are praying that it would make today. If we talk about the word evidence, let's dive into the word of God, you guys. When you, when you look at the word evidence, type in what comes to your mind first. I'll give you some time. What comes to your mind when you hear the word evidence? All right? You're typing, right? I don't know about you, but some of the words that come to my mind is proof. Truth. Let's look at what the dictionary says evidence consists of. It's the availability, excuse me, the available body of facts or information that's indicating whether a belief or a proposition is true or valid. It's also that which tends to prove or to disprove something for the grounds of belief. I think that's amazing. And as we look at the word of God today, Look at this title, look at this subject, that faith is evidence. It's amazing because faith is something you can't see with your naked eye. You can't see it with your naked eye. And I reminded you all, last Sunday, Pastor even said himself that God has a vision for our lives, but we must develop it by, you guessed right, faith. Yes, yes. Let's go to the Word of God. I want to go to Hebrews chapter number 11. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture, and we all know, and we have heard, we have read this message, but today is Bible study, so that means we're going to study the Bible. <laughs> and so let's go to Hebrews Chapter number 11, I'm excited. I'm all over the place. All these scriptures are just jumping out in my mind. And I want to share them with you as God has ordained today. Hebrews chapter number 11, we'll start reading at verse number one. If you got it, say, I got it. It reads like this. I'm reading the King James Version. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to read that again. Now, when? Now, faith <laughs> is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, if you go into the courtroom and you notice, you know, you have the judge and you have the uh, you have a jury, you have someone taking notes, but there are two individuals in that courtroom. Those are the two individuals. They are the reason why they're even there. One is the plaintiff, the person who is suing. The defendant, the person who is being sued. And both are looking for some information. Both are looking for, watch this, proof. Both are looking for the truth. And I'm mighty afraid that most of us, if I was to correlate the courtroom with our life, many of us are living our lives according to a lie rather than the truth. 
Isn't it amazing that with a lie, you always have to have another lie to keep that lie a lie? But with the truth, it stands on its own. And what I'm here to do today is to encourage you and to let you know faith cannot be explained. It has to be experienced. Again, faith cannot be explained. It has to be experienced. And if that's you, I want you to type, I'm looking for my experience. I'm looking for my experience. And it's like a movie. You, you can't just keep on looking for God. You have to watch God. Many of us are looking at the trailers, but we're not watching the movie. We're just getting quick little tidbits and, and little, little fun things that God wants to do in our life instead of enjoying the full process of what he wants to do in your life. And that requires faith. So what I want to do is I want to do something a little unique, a little different, and I want to correlate faith to our five senses. Number one, touch. Number two, to taste. Number three, our smell. Number four, our eyesight, what we see. And number five, what we hear. Number one, let's back up a little bit. Our faith is something that requires a touch. Let's go to Luke chapter number eight, verse 43 through 48. We're talking about faith is evidence. If you got it, say, I got it. Again, Luke chapter number eight, we're going to start reading uh, verse 43. It says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched, there it is, the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, who touched me? And when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayeth thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him and declared unto him before all the people, for what cause she had touched him. And now she was healed immediately. That's that now faith, y'all. Somebody say now faith. Now, yes, sir, now. Verse 48. And he said unto her, I love this part. Now he got intimate. Now he got precise. Now he got detailed in the courtroom of this woman's issue and said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Our faith requires a touch. Let me ask you a rhetorical question. What are you touching? And I think it's amazing as Jesus was walking through the crowd, the Bible says he stopped and said, who touched me? And I remember for so many of you all, Minister Mayo and, 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 and all of those that are watching and Kevin and, and some of you others who might be in a place right now where you are looking to touch what your faith has currency for. And the Bible says that he was walking and the Bible says that the people were thronging Jesus. Now, you got to understand something. When I read this passage of scripture, I said, Lord, why would you say just like the disciples? Says, why would you ask who touched me? And the Lord showed me through the scripture. And he showed me as I continue to read and see when you're hungry and your faith has you at a place where you're hungry. God will speak to you. And he said, why? He, he, he said, who touched me? And so that Peter said, hey. What do you mean who's touching you? All the people are thronging thee. In other words, God, through Jesus, was walking through the crowd in such a way. And everybody wanted their miracle at the same time. Everybody wanted their healing at the same time. Everybody wanted something so bad from God that their hunger for their miracle forced him to walk where he was going. So one woman who reaches out through faith, Hearing that he was walking through the crowd after spending all that she had. He said, why do you ask who touched me? And so Jesus said, for I perceive that virtue 
is going out from me. In other words, when I read this passage, I realized the reason why Jesus said, who touched me, is because because everybody is thronging you or around you, they might be on you, but that does not mean that they were touching you. And some people are around you, but they haven't touched your heart. Some people are in your life for their own reasons. So he said, who touched me? Not who's around me. Not who just wants something good and then they leave. Because the touch creates the miracle. Being around just creates excitement. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to just be around Jesus. I don't want to just be around for the miracle. I want to touch. I want to feel. I want to embrace that which my faith is reaching for. And so now he turns around and he looks at the woman. First, she was considered woman. But this time, because she touched Jesus, he considers her intimately daughter. Thy faith hath made thee whole, watch this, go in peace. Many of us are looking for healing when in actuality God wants to make us whole. Because if you're healed, you can get sick again. But if you're whole, you won't have to come back for the same miracle. And many of us in our life, we have to learn how to mature in our faith. Why are we praying redundantly? Why are we praying, the, as the word says, of miss again and again and again? When you apply your faith, you don't have to beg God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're not beggars. We just ask. And if you ask, you shall receive. Somebody just type in the comment section, touch, touch. Our faith is tangible. Now, remember, according to Hebrews 11, and we'll move forward, it says now faith. There are some things that we're believing God for that it doesn't require a 12-step program. It doesn't require a year of therapy. It doesn't require what the world says we need. It requires an immediate affection of our desire. So that's why Hebrews 11 says now what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, that is the evidence of things not seen. And I believe in my heart that we should look for the unfamiliar. Be familiar with the unfamiliar. Your blessing is not in what you know. It's really in what you don't know. It's not who you know. It's not who you can shake hands with. It's who you haven't met yet. It's who you haven't connected to yet. That requires faith. Taste. Number two, faith is an acquired taste. How tasteful are you? In, in our world, we believe taste is based on how you dress, how you smell, where you go, where you shop. But let's go real quick to Psalm 34, verse 8. Faith, number two, is an acquired taste. What is your taste in life? Number one, we learn that faith is a required touch. Number two, it's a required taste. In Psalm 34, verse number eight. If you got it, say amen. And 34, verse number eight, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, what, is good. Blessed is the man that trusted. There that word is again, trusted in him. In order to have faith, you have to have trust. And many of us, when we talk about the word trust, we always talk as if we have an option with God. Well, I'm going to trust in the Lord or it's going to be these bills. I'm going to trust in the Lord or I'm going to get that promotion. I'm going to trust in the Lord or I'm going to get that house. I'm going to trust in the Lord or I'm going to have my peace. If you trust in God, there is no other option. If you're trusting in God, there is no other requirement. When you're trusting in God, that's it. Because he is the creator of heaven and earth. And so if you trust in God for whatever you are believing God for, that woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years did not have another option. The Bible says she spent all she had. She spoke to her friends. Right? But now I hear that Jesus is walking through. The only thing that's left now is touching 
Jesus. There is no other option. And so many of us are left with choices and God is saying, stop making choices and start making decisions. Make a decision to trust in God. So we understand that in order to have faith, you have to have an acquired taste. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, the woman, the boy, the girl who trust in him. And it's so amazing to learn how to trust in God because trust requires a process. Many of us are afraid because we are looking for the promise and God is more concerned for the process. For the promises of God are yea and amen. But it's the process. How you get to that promise is what is important. Amen. Let's also go to Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Verse number 6. Again, we're talking about an acquired taste. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. And I'm running a little bit fast here today, y'all, because I'm so excited about this word. It says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You want to be filled? Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Have a taste. Have a taste for righteousness. Have a taste for being faithful to your husband. Have a taste for being faithful to your wife. Have a, have a taste for training, not raising, but training your children in the ways of God. Have a taste for pleasing God. Have a taste for being righteous and being integral when you put together contracts. Have an acquired taste for faith you hunger and you thirst after righteousness the bible says that you shall be filled and that word shall it represents a promise it's guaranteed if you hunger and you thirst after righteousness you shall be filled how many people have millions of dollars but they go to bed at night and they don't have trust how many husbands and wives love each other and sleep in separate bedrooms? How many children who, 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 who grow up without both parents in the home or with one parent in the home and they're, they're, they're feeling the neglect? They're expressing in the world that they're left alone. They're expressing that they're not being taught. They're not being trained. How many people don't have the taste of faith? So when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. You don't have to go to bed at night looking over your shoulder. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to have a conviction when you do that which is righteous because we serve a righteous God. He's not like man that he should repent. He's not like man that he would lie. He's not like man that will fool us or that will connive us or will trick us. He's not that kind of God. And so righteous, a righteous God re requires righteous people. A righteous God requires righteous people. You cannot live like the devil and use God's last name. It doesn't work like that. That's not faith. That's foolish. Right? We can't talk about being a Christian. We've got to be a Christian. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And the world, let me talk to the screen right now, to the world that is watching, and you're wondering, is that God real? Is that God for real? Is that God for real? Let me tell you, he's real. Like the old people would sing the song, yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real. Hallelujah. He's real. You don't believe me? Look at your hands. Look at your, your palm. Have you noticed that even in your palm, let me, show you, let me show you what faith looks like. Faith is built like your palm. Have you noticed that if you look at the design inside your hand, scientists has even confirmed and confessed that there is no other person on the planet with the same design in your palm. I don't care where you go in the entire globe in the world. If you open up your palm and you look at the design, not even the design in both of your hands match. And they don't match anybody else's design in the entire world. Try it. Test it. Prove 
me wrong and I will give you a million dollars that I don't have. <laughs> right? You go and you try and you test it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm talking crazy now, right, y'all, right now, you all, because I want you to understand, do the homework yourself. Try it for yourself. If you don't believe me, look in your hands and go anywhere in the world and try to see if you can find a match. That's the kind of God that we serve, that he created you in such a unique way that you cannot be duplicated. Amen. So number one, the first First, faith sense is touch. The second, faith sense is taste, an acquired taste. Number three, it is a smell. It is a fragrance. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. We're going to read verse 14 through 17, but we're going to highlight verse number 15. Again, I hope you're being blessed. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 14 through 17, and we're going to highlight verse number 15. If you got it, say, I got it. Yeah. Verse number 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always, somebody shout always, always, always causeth us, and that causeth, E-T-H, represents continuously, it causeth us to triumph. In Christ and maketh manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ in them that are saved and in them <laughs> that perish. To the one we are the Savior of death unto death and to the other the Savior of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speaketh we in Christ. I love verse number 15. For we are unto God a sweet savior of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. When those that are saved experience your life, what do they smell? Mm, good, good. Do they swell, do they, excuse me, do they smell sweet love? Do they smell forgiveness? Mm, good. Oh. Do they sense, do they sense reality, transparency in your life? When those that are not saved, those that might perish, God forbid, even those that perish, when they smell your life, does it influence them to want to come on our side? Does it make them say, man, I need that in my life. Yeah, it's like when you walk into a room that has potpourri, right? And after you've cleaned that room and you, 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 there is an a after smell, not after taste. You know how when you eat food, you have an aftertaste, but it, there's an after smell that, that leaves around. Try bleach, <laughs> right? It's, it's so strong that it leaves a lasting smell yeah, yeah. to that man who loves cologne or loves oils. Some of that lasts longer than the day that it was sprayed because it's that sweet. And that's what our faith does. Our faith leaves a lasting smell on people's life, a lasting taste on people's life, a lasting, a lasting impression of, of love and of comfort and of joy. When people smell and they, ex they know that faith has been exuberated from our pores. They know it. They can sense it. So faith leaves a fragrance or a smell. Let's go to, the, to the, the next one, which is seeing. We walk by faith and not by sight. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. We're almost there, you guys. Just Flipping over a couple pages, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 7 is our highlight. And if you got it, you can say again, I got the word. Got the word. It says something just like this, for we walk by faith, comma, not by sight. I'll read that again. For we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. Amen. 
Faith does not require eyesight. It requires vision. Again, faith does not require eyesight. It requires vision. What do you see beyond what you see? What do you want beyond what you want? What do you need beyond what you need? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's called faith. Amen. Number five, faith requires hearing. Let's go to Romans chapter number 10, verse number 17. Again, Romans chapter number 10, verse number 17. I hope you all are being blessed Today, again, we're talking about faith is evidence. And some of you who are under the sound of my voice, you are at a place in life. You might be on the plaintiff side. You might be on the defendant side. You might just be a person that is standing by just to see what God is going to do. You might be in the jury box. You might be the one that's determining what's, what is God going to do. Through your prayer, through, through your anticipation, through, through your expectation. You might be the one that's just watching. Is this thing that I've been believing God for going to happen? Yes, it will. But how do you get faith? Watch this. Now, I, I'm going to mess with some of your theology and the way you've been taught and what you grew up trying to understand faith to be. Faith is not something you pray for. <laughs> it's nothing you fast for. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah, yeah. But you can't just hear anybody, y'all. And the problem is we go to social media. Mm. We're reading books and we're reading things that are twisting our mind about what faith is, all except the word of God. Woo. Come on, let's, let me show you the real way you get faith. Romans chapter number 10, verse number 17. If you got it, just type, I got it. And it says in verse number 17, so then... <laughs> faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Watch this. So then, again, verse number 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, so then represents after you tried everything else, then, after you've heard everybody else, then, after you've seen what you've seen, then, so then, faith cometh by hearing. Let me ask you a question. What are you hearing? What do you listen to when you get up early in the morning? What, are you, what is playing in your car right now? What's in your playlist? Right? What's on your YouTube channel? What is your playlist even in your faith? Are you replaying the touch of faith? Are you replaying the taste of faith? Are you replaying the smell of faith? Are you replaying how you see faith? That's good. That's good. Are, are you replaying how you hear on, in your faith? Yeah, is it more about magazines and novels than it is the Bible? Woo. Is it more about those who we're watching on television? Stars versus the word of God? Faith comes by hearing. And I don't know about you if you're watching today, but I'm in a place in my life, especially during this pandemic, where I'm realizing more than ever before, I need to hear from God. Okay, I hear you, brother. I, I love my wife, but I need to hear from God. I hear you, my sister. I, I love my husband, but I need to hear from God. I, I hear you, young people. I got to go to school today, and, and, and I got to go to practice today. I understand you need to hear those people. You need to listen to those people. But you need a word from God. I'm telling you, the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is going to stand forever. And when you're gone, the word will still be here. You need to hear from God. You want to know how to pay off your bills? Get in the word. On, you want to be debt free? Get in the word. You want to be found faithful and, and be found forgiven? Get in the word. Come on, Amen. I'm telling you, your faith. The Bible says in John, I believe it's around chapter 11, that Jesus was walking. And he was walking with his homeboys, right, the disciples. And he said, listen, what is the word on the street? 
who do men say that I am? And they all spoke up. Oh, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elias. Some say you are a prophet. Some say you're this and some say you're that. And then he stops and he said, well, wait a minute. Y'all been walking with me all this time. Yeah. Who do you say yeah. that I am? And out of all those disciples, only one spoke up and he said, wait a minute, you are Christ, the son of the living God. This is beautiful. That required faith. And Jesus looks at him. He says, wait a minute, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. But my father, which was in heaven and upon this rock. Hallelujah. I'm going to build my church. Can I stop for a minute, C-Tab? Can I stop for a minute, Detroit? Can I stop for a minute, uh, Chicago, Africa, wherever you're watching? And can I tell you something about the church? Let me tell you about faith and church. There is no such thing as church hurt. Oh, well, wait a minute, Brother Ryan. They did me wrong. Oh, well, wait a minute. I've been following the preacher. I've been following the evangelist. I've been going to church all my life and I got hurt by the church. There's no such thing biblically that supports that error. Now, people are in the church that can hurt you. Circumstances can hurt you, but that doesn't mean the church because the church was not found on hurt. The church wasn't found on emotionalism. It was found on revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And upon this rock, what is that rock? The foundation of knowing that you ain't just an apostle. You ain't just a preacher. You're not like John the Baptist. You're not like anybody else. You are Christ, the son of the living God. We don't serve a dead God. Yes, sir. And upon this rock, you didn't see that with your naked eye. You didn't touch that. You didn't smell that. You had to sense that that came from God, which was in heaven. So we talked about the five senses of, of faith, to touch, to taste, to smell, to see, to hear. That requires your faith. And all of those biblical analogies that we gave you today hopefully helped you. Now let's talk about real quick before we end the discussion on today, the four principles of our faith. Number one, faith is mature. Somebody type in the comment section, faith is mature. We're almost there, y'all. Faith is is mature. I've learned something. Perfection does not mean flawless. It means mature. Matthew says in 548, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. Can I stop you and help you, my friend? Stop telling yourself the lie. Nobody's perfect. Oh, nobody's perfect, Ryan. Nobody will never be perfect. That's not correct. Well, this is Bible study, right, family? Come on, don't get mad at your brother. Just, just walk with me for a second. The Bible says to be ye therefore perfect. Now, that doesn't mean flawless. Let me help you because I can see you watching right now and you stop writing and you say, well, wait a minute. What do you mean nobody's perfect? Perfection does not mean flawless. It means mature. Even the mistakes that you've made before, you not making them anymore allows you now to graduate to maturity. That's good. Amen. That's good. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to type today. Today I'm graduating. <laughs> today I'm graduating. You don't have to wait for somebody to give you a tassel or somebody to read you off your rights. You don't have just rights. You have a reason to give God glory. It's not about a right. It's not about a vote. It's, it, it, promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. It comes from God. So faith is mature. Number two, faith is a reason. What you're believing God for leaves you a reason. Some of you have been praying and fasting. We were in prayer and fasting in the beginning of this year, and we came off in the beginning of February. And some of you, like me, we were praying and believing God for things that is beyond our own capacity. That was a reason why. That's why Hebrews 11, as we go back to the original scripture we read today, now faith is the substance. See, the thing is about faith, it is substantial. Faith is substance. If you see this, and obviously you know what it is because some of you all have read the label already. 
But if I shook this bottle up and I said, is this water or is this Sprite? Some of you would say it's water. Oh, I don't know. It's, there's some bubbles in there. I'm, I'm trying to throw you off, right? I'm trying to sell you something different. Is this water or is this Sprite? Because they're both clear. <laughs> but what makes it different between whether it's water or it's Sprite? What makes it difference is the elements that are inside. <laughs> and some of you, there are some elements in you you haven't shaken yet. There, there are some of you that are watching. There are some elements in you you haven't awakened to yet. You haven't thrilled. You, you didn't thrive to that place yet. Why? Because your faith is lying dormant. You want somebody else to do it for you. You want somebody else to pray it for you. You want somebody else to see it for you, taste it for you, touch it for you, smell it for you. And this can't not happen. Like we said earlier, faith cannot be explained. It has to be experienced. So faith is a reason what is the reason why you're exercising your faith number three faith is an experience faith is an experience again faith cannot be explained it has to be experienced and number four the final thought today faith is freedom faith is freedom for whom the son sets free after you have looked at the case that has been dealt your hand sometimes life seems like it's unfair sometimes it seems like oh, the whole jury is looking at you as if you're guilty sometimes you're you're looked at as the the castaway or the black sheep the forgotten one. Let me tell you today, whoever you are who's watching, I don't care what yesteryear said, what yesterday said, what yester hours done has dealt. If you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed to move a mountain and say to that mountain, be thou removed, it shall happen in your favor, according to the word of God. Faith is evidence. Father, in the name of Jesus, if somebody is watching who is not saved, who doesn't know you in the departure of their sin, just repeat after me, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Please forgive me. Help me. Mature me. Build my faith so I may know you in a better way. In Jesus' name, I believe that you died, Jesus. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you rose again with all power, that I have that power. I believe I'm saved. And I'm ready to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, congratulations. Today you just made one of the greatest decisions of your life. And this one was the greatest one that you could have negotiated with heaven. And that is being a part of the body of Christ. God bless you today. Faith is evidence. What are you looking for? Can you smell it, touch it, see it, taste it, feel it? Can you hear it? I hear it. It's on the way. Faith is evidence. God bless you, and until next time, Godspeed.